Today I'm experimenting with Distress Oxide Sprays for the first time. I've heard so much about their unique blending properties and stunning effects, and I'm excited to see how they transform my cards. Will it be a stunning success or a colorful disaster? Stick around and let's find out together. Hey everyone, it's Lean from ColoradoLean.com. Welcome back to the craft room. Yep, I am extremely tardy to the party when it comes to Tim Holtz Distress Oxide Sprays. But let's go ahead and see what we can make today. So on the tabletop here, I have a few things that I'll be using. Of course, I have Distress Oxide Sprays. Um, I picked up a handful of three packs from Michaels. And so we're going to be working with those colors. I have three different types of watercolor cardstock. Um, I'm going to be trying Tim Holtz's Distress Watercolor Cardstock. I've heard great things about this. Um, I'm also going to be using a 140 pound Canson watercolor. I have used this before for many different projects. Um, the only thing I don't like about this particular one is it's more of a off-white, almost a cream color versus a complete white color that the Tim Holtz is. I'll also be trying out some of this Canson Graduate Watercolor cardstock. It is 117 pound. Um, the reason I picked this up is one of my ideas is to make a distress oxide background and then stamp on it and cut a coordinating image out from that paper. I know I cannot do that with the 140 pound card. Been there, done that, and I failed. And this watercolor cardstock is a lot lighter and I'm 100% confident I will be able to do that technique with this card. Um, I also have my Tonic Studios and Tim Holtz glass mat to work with. I have the extra piece to go with it for some other techniques. And we're going to need water. I have my distress sprayer here. Uh, we're going to be doing a watercolor technique today. And I have just two images that were heat embossed with uh, Distress Tim Holtz white embossing powder. Um, those are from the Alta New Wallpaper Art Flower Set. And I have some assorted brushes to use. I also have paper towels at the ready and my Wagner heat gun. Um, this probably isn't the best thing to use for this technique. It's the only one I have, so I will definitely be using this on the low setting. So let me go ahead and get this all cleaned off, and then we'll get to our first background. So I have had these Distress Oxide Sprays for uh, probably a month or so. Um, I am a little intimidated by them, I'm not going to lie. I have gone through and I made myself a swatch book. Um, that is... It was important to me so I could see what the colors are. I could see about how they reacted with water in person. Um, this is a 140 pound Canson watercolor cardstock. I sprayed the entire sheet. The top half is just the oxide spray and I added water to the bottom of the card. Um, I mentioned before that I purchased these in three packs from Michaels. So that is how I did my swatch book. So in one pack, I got mustard seed, wild honey, and carved pumpkin. And because these are a dye and a pigment mix, I wanted to try them on some black watercolor cardstock. So I sectioned it off and I sprayed each color and I added water to just half of it. And then I also have my cleanup sheets in here. 
So I thought that was kind of fun and a good way to get a general idea of what the colors looked like. Um, I'm definitely intrigued by this black color card stock, or I'm sorry, the black watercolor card. Um, I will definitely be doing something with that in the future after I get used to what I'm doing. Um, I'll also tell you that in the back of this book, I have uh, some mica sprays. So I did them on black card as well as white card. So there was the tarnished, tarnished brass. This is the antique bronze. And then this is the brushed pewter. I have a couple of distress spray stains that I added in here as well. I have tea dye, vintage photo, and of course lost shadow, which I have used before. So let's just jump right in here and see what we can do. Um, with the pigment and dye, these do need to be shaken before every use. Um, I did, I did already shake them and I have them laying on their side like Tim Holtz suggests. So we're going to start off with a piece of Tim Holtz Distress watercolor card. And I'm going to just spray it down a little bit with some water. And then I'm going to spray on some picked raspberry. And I have a, my paper towels at the ready. And then I will put on some wilted violet. <clears throat> now, as I mentioned before, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> um, I do know that as well as with any distress product, wet on wet mixes and blends and wet on dry layers. So I have this first little layer. Um, I will go ahead and kind of collect some of these little dots of color. And I will dry it in between. And then I will add more color. a little bit more of the wilted violet Well, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about any of this. So we'll just set this aside and uh, go on to the next one. Go ahead and... I am going to take a piece of the 140-pound card, and I will just get the majority of this pulled up. And that's actually really pretty. Uh, 
Okay, let's work with let's work with this 114 pound card. Um, I'm going to bring in some mowed lawn and peeled paint. What do we have here? A little twisted citron. What I what I want to do with this panel is I want to be able to cut some leaves out with this. So we'll just wet it down and throw on some color and see what happens. And we'll put a little bit of peeled paint on there. Wow, that curls up quite a bit. Okay, that is a little dry, so we'll go ahead and collect some of this other color off the mat. Wow. Okay, that is flattening out pretty well. Um, let's add some more color here. A little bit more water, a little bit more mowed lawn. That was a really pretty color. For someone who doesn't like green, that is a pretty color. And then a tad bit more of the twisted citron. Let's drag these corners through the color a little bit. That's pretty nice. You know what, let's add, what do we have here? We have a little bit of wild honey. So let's add just a little bit of yellowy goodness in here. There we go. Just a few little sprinkles of that. Well, that's interesting. We'll put a few little dabs of water on there. And there we have that one. Set that aside to dry. <clears throat> And then I'm going to take another piece of this watercolor card and sop up what we have here. That is really pretty. I think I like that one better than the original. Okay, let's take another piece of this lighter weight card. Do it on the textured side this time. Um, I have a little bit of abandoned coral and some fired brick. Let's see what these colors come up with. I'll wet the paper down and then spray colors on. And then we'll go ahead and dry that. Put in a little bit more of the abandoned coral down here. And we'll put a little bit of the fire brick up there. A little bit of water. Oop, 
that was <laughs> that was way too much water right there okay well i obviously don't have the spritzing technique of tiffany Slero. but that's okay this will make an interesting interesting addition to the party So I am just going to set this one aside and let it dry as is. Now, because I honestly have no idea what I'm doing, I am definitely going to add some links in the description below and the corresponding blog post for crafters that really know their distress background techniques. Um, one of them will definitely be Tiffany Solero. She is a goddess when it comes to this. <laughs> I am always impressed with what she is able to accomplish. And a little jealous as well. Um, so I'm just going to grab some more colors here. Um, I have Mermaid Lagoon. Salty Ocean. And my favorite color, Peacock Feathers. So let's go ahead and wet our paper. Put on some Peacock Feathers. Oh, that is so pretty. Uh, that was Salty Ocean. And then here's a little bit of the Mermaid Lagoon. Wow, that is so pretty. Oh, let's put a little bit more Mermaid Lagoon up there in the corner. And that was a little bit more Peacock Feather. And then I'm going to bring my spray bottle up and back and just give it two mists. I'll let that sit for a moment. And then I will take that off to get some of those water droplets on there. I like that. That's, that's really pretty. There are a couple of edges that need a little bit more color so I will swipe that through what I have left here yeah let's do just a little bit more there we go all right I will Dry this off just a little bit. Okay, and then we have another background. I really like this one. This has some really pretty colors in it. 
All right, let's work with some yellows. I have wild honey and mustard seed. So again, I will spray down my paper and add some wild honey and now the bright, incredibly bright mustard seed. Okay, that is a very nice start. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring in my silicone mat. Um, I do know that the distress inks react differently depending on the surface. So on the silicone mat, it's going to bead up and it's going to retain those beads. So let's put a little bit more of the wild honey and some of the mustard seed. And here, let's throw in some carved pumpkin. There. Now I remember watching some Tim Holtz uh, videos where he just kind of runs his fingers through and then that will get some different reactions and colors. I think while I have this here, I'm going to bring in my green card that we cleaned up the mat with and I will just layer on some of this other color. Now that looks interesting. Yeah, I kind of like that. I will let that sit for a little bit. We'll do some water drops on there. Uh, let's put on a little bit more mustard seed. Just light little spritz over the top. And then I'm just going to call this one done. So the next thing I want to do is I want to kind of clean this mess up and I want to try a watercolor technique. So I will be back with you in just a few minutes. So while I was looking around trying to figure out exactly how to use distress oxide sprays, um, I ran across a YouTube video from Amy R from Prairie Paper Inc. And I will put that link in the description below. And she did a watercolor technique with the Distress Oxide Sprays. So I'm going to give that a try. Um, she just, she put some of the oxide or some of the ink down on her glass mat. And this is a really small image, so I'm not going to need that much. Um, for the green leaves, I'm going to use peeled paint and for the flowers, I'm going to use wilted violet. Okay. The brush I'm using is a Royal and Langnickel Zen. Uh, this is a size two. Uh, the first thing we need to do is put some water down on our image. And this, this is even difficult for me to see, so I know you're not going to be able to see it. And then we'll just throw some ink in there. Now, because this is water reactive ink, um, it will 
start to oxidize with the water and because it needs to be mixed um, it is going to start separating over here on the palette <laughs> Okay. And you can see how just one color paint is just really giving a huge amount of color difference there. It's really nice. I like that effect. So let's go ahead and move over to our flower. I will again wet a petal and then drop in some of this beautiful wilted violet. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> wow. That was a mistake. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> oh, good gravy. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness okay all right well moving on <laughs> okay um so yeah so i i wanted a color for the center of my flower because there's a little bit that of paper that is not heat embossed and i thought that mustard seed would be beautiful so put a little bit out on my palette and as you saw screwing the cover back on had it tilted too far and now I have yellow paper but surprisingly um it didn't really get on the flower itself so go me <laughs> get some of that dried off the back though okay so let me <laughs> just Put a little bit of water on here just to kind of wet it down and then we'll drop in our mustard seed now there's there's not going to be a lot of color here so all right so let's go ahead and stop while we're ahead we'll take a tiny piece of paper towel just to soak up the ink that's on top of the embossed image and i'm going to set this aside before anything else happens to it <laughs> all right let me get this cleaned off i'll be back with you in a minute so i got everything all cleaned up and my backgrounds are completely dry 
So I thought I'd run through and show you what we have. Um, I don't know how good they are. I don't know how bad they are. They are what they are, and I'm not going to cry about it. Um, I also don't remember which ones I used on all of them. Um, I know for this particular one, I used Wilted Violet and Picked Raspberry. And that one's pretty nice. And then here is my, my cleanup paper on that. Very basic, but you know, so am I. The next one was with green inks. Um, let's see, I used Twisted Citron, Mowed Lawn, and Peeled Paint. Um, I did come back in with a little bit of Wild Honey over the top. So that turned out pretty nice. And again, here is my cleanup sheet. Um, this over the top is a little bit of Wild Honey Carved Pumpkin and perhaps a little bit of mustard seed. So that'll make a really nice background. I delved into the red colors with some abandoned coral and fired brick and I created this background. That should be really nice as well. And then we hit in with the blues. I, I know this was Mermaid Lagoon, Peacock Feathers, and Salty Ocean. And that one turned out really pretty. And then here was the cleanup sheet on that one. And I will definitely uh, take some more pictures and post them in the corresponding blog post. Here we have our yellows and oranges. I started off with wild honey and mustard seed, and then I came back through with some carved pumpkin. And then we have our watercolor and our mistake. <laughs> uh, this turned out really nice. Let me bring that up to the camera. Um, I really like how that turned out. The leaves look like I used more than one color, but if you'll recall, all I used on the leaves was uh, peeled paint. So that turned out really nice. Uh, the flower is wilted violet, and that too kind of has uh, some little pinks in there, maybe a little bit of blue purple in there. And then I have my mustard seed. <laughs> um, I'm either going to have to repaint this flower before I put it on a card, or I might just take some mustard seed without the water and paint all the way around the flower because it is way too close right here. And it will definitely show when I cut it out. So that was my bad, but I am going to make this work. I'm not sure how, but I am going to make that work. Um, I made a few more backgrounds without turning the camera on. Um, I don't remember exactly which colors I used. Um, I can take a guess with this one. Uh, we'll go with picked raspberry, wilted violet for, cer for certain. And perhaps a little bit of peacock feather. I really like that background. That one turned out nice. Um, I went more with the blues on this one. Um, Mermaid Lagoon, Salty Ocean, a little bit of Faded Jean. And then I threw some Wilted Violet on top. And then this would have been the cleanup from that. And, well, okay. Um, this also looks like Salty Ocean, Peacock Feathers, perhaps a little uh, Mermaid Lagoon. Huh, I don't know. I made the mistake of not writing this stuff down. Um, and then my last two were definitely cleanups. Um, I know with this one, I also sprayed down onto my glass mat some wilted violet. So there we go. Um, we're going to call this part one.
and then I will come back it with another video and I will make something with these backgrounds or I will enhance them a little bit more and then come back with the part three. I, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do at the moment. Um, but yeah, we are done for the day. So thank you so much for joining me today in my first major adventure with distress oxide sprays. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments below if this was a success or a colorful disaster. Other than this, I know this was a colorful disaster. That was my bad. <laughs> anyway, thank you again for joining me today. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when I put up the next video. Have a great day, you guys. Bye.